Hey everyone, Anthony here, and welcome to my absolute beginner's guide for Wondershare's Filmora 9. If you just downloaded Filmora 9 but have no idea what anything is or how to get started, then this is the video for you. I'm going to give you a general overview of Filmora and all of its different features, and I'm also going to be editing together a few sample clips. Once the video is over, if there's anything at all in Filmora 9 that you'd like me to explore in greater depth, feel free to tell me in the comments and subscribe to my channel to stay updated. With all of that out of the way, let's jump over to my computer and get started. All right guys, welcome to my desktop. As you can see, I've got Filmora 9 right here. And of course, the first step is to click on it. Once this menu pops up, all you have to do is hit new projects and bam, you're in. Okay, so this is the main interface of Filmora 9. We've got the media library right here, which is where all of your video clips are going to be stored. We've got the playback window, which is where you're going to see, which is where you're going to be able to preview your, preview your footage and see all of your edits. And of course, this is the timeline, which is where all of the movie magic happens. So what I'm going to do next is cut together a few clips. All I have to do is drag and drop my sample footage from the folder straight into the media library. I can double click my footage to preview it in the playback window, like so. So once I've selected my footage, all I have to do is drag it down to the timeline, hit match to media, and then I'm gonna just drag in everything else one by one and of course, in Filmora 9, it is very easy to reorder your clips if you need to. I can scrub through the tracks by dragging the playhead until I'm at the point that I want. And then I can just hit play to see how everything is looking. Now, some of these clips do run on for a little too long, uh, but it's really easy to trim them down to size. All I have to do is grab the ends of the track like this and just drag it till I'm at the length that I want. So I can kind of cut down the grass shot by about half. Um, and then to clear out the empty space quickly and easily, you just right click and hit ripple delete. Alternatively, I can also just hit the scissor icon that pops up right here, and that'll split the clip right in half. There are also several ways that you can resize the timeline. There's this little slider right here, and you can see that by dragging it, I'm making the track smaller and bigger. If I need to like spread these clips out for whatever reason to get like really precise edits, this is what I do. I can also just go to this little drop down menu over here, Go to adjust track height and choose small, normal, and I was at big previously. Now that the timeline basics are down, let's start moving through the tabs up here. The first tab after the media tab is going to be the audio tab. If you come in, you'll see a bunch of different music tracks that you can use for your videos. In my opinion, most of the music is pretty generic, but there are a few good ones in there. So just click around, listen to them and see what you like. There's also a category for basic sound effects, as well as a tab where you can store your own music. Uh, but what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to select a song that I like, and then I'm just going to drag it right down underneath my footage. And there you go, you can see that my video is starting to come together. Next up, we have the title tab. There is a wide variety of preset titles in here, from end credits to lower thirds, to main titles, so pick and choose whatever works for your project. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to select one and I'm just going to drag it down and place it over my video. And then if I double click the title track, this window will pop up where I can change the actual text, the style, the font, and the color. So I'm gonna do that. I'm going to just say fall 2018. Yeah, there is a ton of options and different things you can mess around with in here. And actually, if you go to the advanced window, there is a lot more. You can change the timing of the text and uh, the actual animation of how it appears. Once you get down to it, it's actually really fun and really useful to be able to have that much control over your text. All right, the next tab that I'm going to be looking at are the transitions. Filmora 9 has a wide variety of transitions to fit just about any video you're working on from dispersion blur to doorway, morph. I typically like to stick with the clean and simple ones so that my video looks that much more professional, but really you can use whichever one you like. So I'm just going to drag a basic dissolve down to my footage. All I have to do is place it in between my clips, trim it down to size. I can do that for all of my clips and you can see how that looks. And in my opinion, it looks pretty good. A little choppy, uh, but we can clean that up. It also has to do with Filmora's proxy rendering. So uh, when you're playing back, it's not always going to play back perfectly smoothly, but just give it a minute and it should work just fine. 
All right, next we're looking at the effects tab. You'll notice these two drop downs right here, filters and overlays. If you think of like Instagram filters, that's pretty much what these are, except for video. I can really just choose any one I want. I like this one, 70s. I'm gonna drag it down over this clip of the bird to see how that looks. Looks pretty good. Now, I haven't personally used all of these filters because there's just so many, but there's one for just about any use you can think of. And of course, if you click on it, they're all customizable, so you can reduce the strength of the filter, or if there are any other options and any of the others, you can adjust those as well. Next, we can head on over to overlays. Some of the overlays are similar to filters, but there are things like uh, these lens flares. But yeah, there you go, filters, overlays, pretty cool stuff. And finally, we're moving on to the Elements tab. These are pretty much basic overlays as well, but there are things like emojis and badges. Got this random made fresh one right here. Let me download it. Uh, drag it over the footage. And then you can move it around to wherever you want and resize it. And there you go, we have a certified fresh bird. Now that we're done up here, I'm gonna show you a couple of other panels that are helpful. If you click on a video clip, this window will pop up right here. Uh, and you have a bunch of different options. Uh, you can rotate the video if you want to. There's also this chroma key tab, uh, which is for like green screens and whatnot. You can see that I have one back there. So uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail right now, but yeah, I'll do a green screen tutorial at some point. So keep an eye out for that. You can also go over to the audio tab right here. Uh, so you get basic things like fade in or fade out or pitch. Uh, you have color if you want to uh, adjust the color of your image. So you can like make it warmer and change the tint, contrast, saturation, brightness, um, all that. So there's also this advanced window that gives you a lot more options and flexibility. Uh, so if you're the kind of person that likes to get into the real nitty gritty of how your footage looks, this is a great tab to have. It's really powerful and I use it all the time. And then finally, in the motion tab, there are different options that you can use to like make your footage bounce or fly around the screen. I mean, if you needed that for whatever reason. Once you're done editing your video, you can head right on over to the export button. The export window is really helpful. You actually have an option to upload it directly to YouTube. You can also upload it to Vimeo if you use Vimeo. Uh, you can format it for specific devices like iPhones or iPads. But in this case, do a regular MP4 or MOV or AVI, whichever one you want. You go to settings, make sure it's on best, and then just hit export. And there you go. Filmora 9 is a really powerful piece of software, especially if you're just getting serious about video editing and you want to get started with YouTube or making home movies or any of that. Plus, it's really easy to use. All right, hopefully this video gave you a solid foundation to get started with Filmora 9. Again, if there's any features that you'd like me to explore in greater depth, let me know in the comments, and I'd be happy to make a video on it. I definitely do want tutorials to be a bigger part of my channel. Currently, I do a lot of short films and tech reviews, but yeah, if you're interested in any of that stuff, be sure to subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, thanks for watching.